not here for a history lesson. Interior, day, a bland conference room in a chain hotel. Lights up on the judge who sits at a table facing the audience. Judge. Okay, everybody, could I have your attention, please? Taps glass with spoon. Thank you all for coming. Just a few reminders before we start. This is a confidential hearing, and it must be emphasized again that no word of it is to be repeated outside of this room. It's what's called a quasi-judicial proceeding. It's not a real trial, but I am a real judge, and I'll be doing the judging. It's for me to decide if an accused party member should remain in the party or not, and my findings, by the way, are not subject to appeal. Everybody clear? Okay, well, let's wheel the next one on, shall we? Defendant enters, accompanied by defendant's wife. They sit at a table at right angles to the judge's table. Counsel enters, holding a cardboard folder, and sits at a table facing the defendants. A minute taker enters and sits behind the judge. Judge. Defendant, thank you for joining us, and thank you, Mrs. Ab Ab. And if, you'd have, if you should have any questions, my dear, do please just raise your hand. Okay then, counsel, if you're ready. Counsel. If it please you, sir, I will make my opening statement. The defendant, a Labour Party member, is accused of making repeated anti-Semitic comments on social media and of minimising and denying the Holocaust, contrary to the IHRA definition and examples, and which, in the opinion of the National Executive Committee, is grossly detrimental to the party, and contrary to Chapter 2, Clause 1b, to wit, any incident which in the NEC's view might reasonably be seen to demonstrate hostility or prejudice based on age, disability, gender reassignment or identity, marriage and civil partnership, pregnancy and maternity, race, religion or belief, sex or sexual orientation. Your Honour will see from the prosecutorial bundle there are 16 charges. Judge, sorry, uh, what page are we... Counsel. Page 12, if it please, Your Honour. No, the other bundle, sir. No, with the, re with the red tape, Judge. Ah, oh, yes, got it. Well, I think we can dispense with reading the charges, can't we? Everyone stipulates to the charges, don't they? Defendant to audience. I neglected to tell you. The defendant is representing himself in this proceeding. His chosen counsel was deemed unsuitable, and counsel offered to him pro bono was refused to defendant. Defendant, I would like to put it on record that you have refused counsel and elected to speak on your own behalf, and that you have been made aware of the consequences of this and have been advised in the most strenuous terms that it is inadvisable. Defendant, that's correct, sir. Judge, you will of course have been informed of the old joke that a man who reps him represents himself has a fool for a client. Defendant, Many times now, sir. Judge. As you will, defendant. You stipulate to the charges, I take it. Defendant. I do. Judge. And how do you plead? Defendant. I plead not guilty. Judge. Not guilty. Defendant's wife raises her hand. Judge. Yes, my dear. Defendant's wife. This is all confidential, yes? Judge. Oh, it's strictly confidential. That's right. Defendant's wife points to minute taker. So why is he taking minutes? Judge. Well, obviously there needs to be some record of proceedings, doesn't there? Defendant's wife. Why? If it's all secret. Judge. Not secret. Confidential. Defendant's wife. Oh, I see. So not secret then, just, judge, confidential. That's right. Now we're a little short on time, so if you don't mind. Counsel. Gestures towards counsel. Counsel. Now, defendant, could you please tell us what your occupation is? Defendant, I'm an instructor in history at the University of Council. Thank you, an academic. Defendant, I research and teach history at graduate and postgraduate level, yes. My work has been published in Council, and you've been a Labour Party member for? Defendant, 10 years. Council, indeed. Now, defendant, you've seen the charges laid against you. You're aware of the gravity of the accusations and of the significance of this hearing for you personally. 
It isn't just your party membership at stake, is it? It's not just a plastic card, or a lapel pin, or a badge, is it? Anti-Semitism, if proven against you, would not just mean personal and professional shame and ostracism, it might mean significant disruption in your affairs, might it not? Your employer, defendant, my employer has nothing to do with this, nor have they ever had occasion to cancel. Oh, I did not. I merely suggest that any employer might wish to look again at an employee who had been found guilty of repeated anti-Semitic actions. The whole academic world might. Might they not? Defendant, that's, that's not for me to say. Counsel, oh, indeed. But you understand the possibly grave consequences of this hearing. And yet you refuse counsel, against advice. Can you tell us why? Defendant, yes. My initial choice was refused. Judge, your initial choice, sir, is a person who has repeatedly... Defendant and counsel that was offered pro bono was counsel. Yes? Defendant. If I had appointed counsel, I would, not have, I would not have been allowed to speak myself. I chose to speak in my own voice. Counsel. Speak in your own voice. I see. Now, defendant, before we address the specific and very serious charges against you, I'd like first to ask you if you are aware that the Labour Party has recently become the subject of many accusations of the kind we're talking about today. You are aware of that, defendant. Of course, pick up any paper. Counsel, there has been talk of a crisis, has there not? Defendant, I've seen the word used. Counsel, do you think your comments might have contributed to this atmosphere of crisis? Defendant, what? Counsel, you, a Labour Party member, have made comments which have alarmed and offended a great many Jewish people at a time when the party has been under intense pressure to deal with precisely this kind of issue. Defendant, I have made no comment which counsel, as I said, we will be looking in more detail at these comments in due course. But do you think creating alarm and insult at this time has been conducive to the party's good? Do you think you have been acting in the best interests? Defendant, I have never done anything against the interests of the party. Counsel, is that right? Well, now, let's take a closer look at some of these comments. Now, there are charges here of various kinds, some perhaps more notable than others, but I'd like to turn first to this one. This is charge number eight, Your Honour, page 224 in your bundle, in which you are accused of historical revisionism, Holocaust minimization, Holocaust denial. What do you have to say? Defendant, I was in a conversation with a colleague about the boycott of German goods which the, which the Jewish leadership in the US had organised after the Nazis came to power in 1933. The Nazis had swallowed their pride for fear of the impact on Germany, Germany's economy, and so they agreed to negotiate with the Zionist Federation, forced to treat the Zionist representatives as their equals, cancel historical revisionism. Defendant, no, sir, historical fact, if you care to check the sources. For instance, E. Black, 2009, the transfer agreement, cancel Holocaust revisionism, Holocaust denial. Defendant, sir, I am the child of Holocaust survivors, one of whom, cancel, I only refer to the evidence. I don't know you. Defendant, what? Cancel, we are concerned here only with the evidence. This is not the place for family reminiscences, no matter how alluring that prospect may be. Are you a Holocaust denier? Defendant, my mother, sir, survived Lotz and Auschwitz, and you would ask me, Judge, Defendant, please just answer the question as asked. Defendant, sir, I am trying to answer the question. The answer is that to ask the child of Holocaust survivors if he's a Holocaust denier is plain counsel. Yes, defendant. This all makes some kind of sense to you, does it? Judge, defendant, I must ask you to refrain. Defendant, I object, sir, to this attempt to deny, to erase my heritage. 
my history. Judge, I will not have this in my courtroom, defendant. I will have order. You will resume your seat if you please. Defendant, my history, sir, anyone's history, is not some inconvenience that can be, judge, enough. I have asked you to resume your seat. The record will show that you have behaved in an aggressive and threatening manner, and any repetition of such behaviour, defendant's wife raises hand, judge. Yes, Mrs. Defendant's wife. How will the record show that if it's secret, judge? It isn't secret, it's... Defendant. I will simply not have this proceeding interrupted by displays such as that again. I hope I'm understood. Counsel? Counsel. Thank you, Your Honour. Now, defendant, these comments referred to have caused considerable outrage, have they not? Defendant, history can be challenging. Counsel, challenging? In what way? Defendant, someone might have a view about a certain period or event. A historian comes along and says, ah, but not in the South. Sometimes people get upset, yes. Counsel. I'm sorry, not in the South? Defendant. Historian's joke. The historian is the one who says, yes, but not in the South. It's a joke. Counsel. A joke. I see. But people get upset. Defendant. Yes, and I've apologised before, and I apologise again, if anything I've said has caused offence or insult. That is, of course, never my intention. Counsel, and yet you have, haven't you? Caused offence and insult to a great many people. Defendant, a teacher is there to expand minds, to introduce new facts and encourage exploration, not to confirm what people already think. Counsel, so it's okay if you offend or insult the Jewish community because that's your job. Defendant, no, but it is not my job. <clears throat> Sir. Do you have any training in historical method? Counsel, no, nor has that the slightest judge. Defendant, defendant, have you studied the history of the Zionist movement in Nazi Germany? Counsel, I'm not here to answer your judge. I've warned you once, defendant. Defendant, then you simply do not know. Judge, enough! Defendant, you do not have the relevant skills and materials to make a proper assessment of the judge. I know everything! about the history of Nazi Germany, and everything about Jewish history. And I want this to stop, and I want it to stop now. We are not here for a history lesson. Now, counsel, do you have any further questions for the defendant? Counsel, thank you, Your Honor. Just one more question. Defendant, do you think your words could be construed as Anti-Zionist? Anti-Israeli? Defendant. I was brought up in Israel. I served in the Israeli Defence Force for 16 years, of which three were compulsory service, and the remaining 13 as a reservist counsel. Yes, yes, we've seen your resume, but again, we're here to examine the evidence. Defendant. And again, my personal history, my voice, counsel. Is of no consequence to this proceeding, defendant, because you're not here for a history lesson, counsel. That is correct, defendant. Then I have nothing further to say to you, judge. Okay then, um, I'll now consider my verdict and craft my statement. Mr. and Mrs. Um, you'll be notified in due course of the tribunal's findings. I'm sure you can find your own way. Thank you. Counsel and defendant and defendant's wife and minute taker exit. Judge to audience. Well, what can you say? Okay. I'd just like to remind you once again before you leave that these proceedings are strictly, strictly mind secret and that defendant's wife off stage shouting. Don't you mean confidential? Judge, dictating. Restricted circulation. In the case Labour Party against defendant Mr... It was found as follows. Defendant refused to cooperate with the inquiry, adopting a truculent and sometimes aggressive manner. Blah, blah, blah. Sound and lights fade out. Blackout ends. <laughs>